Hello, everyone, and welcome back to This Week in Guns, brought to you by Patriot Patch Company, VZ Grips, and Primary Arms. This show offers commentary on the latest firearms industry news, information, and buzz. I'm your host, Matthew LaRosier, and I'm here with my co-host, Rose the Dog. Rose, say hello to the audience. Oh, you can't, because you're a dog. There's also another person here. Um, His name is um, Othas. Mm -hmm. And you, you might recognize him from popular firearms channel, Grenada Veteran 9999. <laughs> no, Grenada Defector. <laughs> <laughs> how's it going, buddy? Yeah. So, yeah, how's that channel working? Um, Terrible, actually. Um, I think YouTube hates me now. Really? Why? Uh, we've been crashing horribly. And just for those of you who are audio listeners, this is actually Ithai is from CN Arsenal, which is, yep. uh, you know, the, in my opinion, the best gun review channel ever, review. even though they don't do <laughs> <laughs> The worst one, because nobody will give us anything for free because it's all used. <laughs> yeah. It's no... <laughs> but yeah, no, no you've uh, been, so what's been going on? Oh, no, it's just, it's weird. There's basically two tiers of YouTube things that happen when you have a channel. There's your core audience that shows up when you release a new video, and mm -hmm. that number is perfectly fine. It's the way it's always been and slowly growing because people are finding the channel. But then there's this sort of like what you would call the viral aspect where you have these little videos that are more popular than others for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are getting, they've gone to nothing. I don't know why, but YouTube refuses to share us with anybody anymore. Uh, Interesting. So, yeah, it's it's really wild because you know they were responsible for well over half of our metrics is just people vaguely watching bullshit, and uh, it's just gone. Like all of our numbers are one hundred percent, not one hundred percent, but majority people actually watching the content, which is what you'd expect it to be anyway. It's mm -hmm. just very odd because it looks like a, an apocalypse on the back. <laughs> oh, that sucks, man. I hope it'll change. Yeah, th these things do happen. You know, there are ebbs, and there are yeah. flows. Anyway, uh, on to the news. Uh, the first thing, and you had actually not heard of this because you've been, you know, like working, working, like yeah, like actually trying actually, to produce content. I, I have a legitimate gripe that I want to voice right now before we go into the news. Um, I never know what the hell's going on anymore because everybody's become so loud hmm. about every little twist in the plot that mm -hmm. before anything factual or actual has happened. There are nine stories running, and I the the noise level is the same regardless of whether it's actually the sky falling or if it's just chicken little, and it's <laughs> becoming a little frustrating. Yeah, and this is actually something that you and I talked about because uh, some of you don't know this, but the reason Fudbusters exists is actually because Matthias like twisted my arm and made me do it. <laughs> and one of the initial discussions we had is everyone is constantly freaking out, constantly, and there's a huge oh. risk of outrage fatigue. It comes kind of top down too because yeah. the it's a human nature thing. Number one, you need a stake, right? right? When you watch uh, TV shows, uh, the the higher rated TV shows always have some sort of stake going on. There's a mm -hmm. bet, there's a chance to win or lose, and so there's something in the human nature that we like stakes, and so you want to keep saying, "Oh, this is going to mean the end of the world, or the end of this, or the blah right. blah blah." It's all and riding on this one. And it starts with like the uh, NRA and things like that sending out these ridiculous emails and flyers all the time. And at this point, every Second Amendment group is guilty of it. I mean, all of yep. them do this where I get these giant weird red letter things in my inbox. And I have a giant red letter thing in my inbox every day. So how the hell am I supposed to know when it's actually a problem? Well, you... <laughs> Because I don't think you don't. Like, I, 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 apparently, there's been a law passed against us that's destroyed the Second Amendment every week for the past 300 weeks yeah. in my inbox. And yet, somehow, I still have all this. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be wary. I'm saying you have exhausted our wariness. You can't have a guard yeah. on 24 7. You should probably only alert when there's an alert. Uh, like something, something, small boy, something, something, wolf. Yeah. Like, they're they're literally sitting there, and again, I'm going to stress that all of the alphabet soup Second Amendment agencies, um, not agent, you know, organizations are doing this, and there's a there's a rational justification because as somebody who's been at uh, more than one you know nonprofit organizations, I've seen what the numbers look like behind the scenes when they send out panicked emails, you know, uh, so there's a narcotic effect where they just keep doing it, keep doing it. Uh, there's a little bit less. 
but they're exhausting oh. they're exhausting everyone the human yeah. resources of everyone in order to get a three percent extra yield on their donations that month or whatever the case may be and it's and the unsub rates are huge by the way well the, you know what no one's ever offered is a two-tier i want to know when it's an emergency and not otherwise but the problem is inevitably if you sign up for that they're going to start sending you garbage as emergencies right because they just can't resist yep it's it's a narcotic like if we say this thing we get a reward you know a treat right um and it's it's the same way not just for the alphabet mm -hmm. soups but also for gun tubers and and uh, journalists oh yeah no when we had uh, demonetization issues that was our greatest growth in fundraising for the show right and it's been tempting to just yell about demonetization again but that would be dishonest so i mean is it a financial loss for me to not you know shake the tree that way yeah right. it is it's a significant financial loss for me to, i mean for me to not just freak out at random for attention but well and that's also why we did fudbusters the way we did um and you know it might just be because we're both really stupid uh um, yeah integrity does not pay yeah and neither of us are making a tremendous amount of money <laughs> on, our, on what we're doing uh but for whatever reason, uh, we keep doing it. Uh, and not to get all high and mighty, right? There's plenty of people who who are this way. You know, for example, like Stephen Gutowski has been in the Second Amendment space writing for years and years and years, and he's always keeping it straight. Um, there's there's quite a few uh, other people as well. But it's it's frustrating, and I get uh, the topic we're about to cover. I released a video on it. Of course, after watching the third video about how the sky was falling down, about information that we will discover was neither new or accurately reported. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and so I was like, here's what actually happened. And I kind of made fun of the uh, the panicking. And I got a lot of like hate uh, from it. People... Should, we tell, should we tell a story before we tell the hate? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so, let's, get that, let's get under so that people know what that was the little let's, pre, pre let's let the audience check. find out whether or not they're gonna hate you now. Fine. Okay, okay. so and look, I'm gonna say this up front. I actually like John Crump. He's nice to me. I'm okay. in his Discord, but he never did anything when I went in there. Oh <laughs> just, I, that's all it takes for me to like somebody is for them to just be vaguely nice to me. Uh so on September 2nd, he posted this thing on ammo land which is atf requests funding for pistol brace amnesty registration program and he, he it goes on uh, ammo land news has uncovered information showing that da, 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 they're going to force gun owners to register firearms with pistol braces as nfa form one item uh the document was uncovered in a budget justification okay and then he cuts down to one snippet of the document. The document reads, due to the upcoming amnesty registration of pistol brace weapons, photos of the weapon being registered will be required to prove the weapon does utilize a pistol brace in its configuration and would qualify for an amnesty registration. Okay. Uh, and so this then somehow but it does becomes, sound okay. Let's on, on its face. That sounds like an amnesty is coming up, right? Okay. But, but yes, it sounds like an amnesty is intended. Right on its. Face. But what do you gain from that? Right. Like, what other information do you gain from this? Uh, due to the upcoming amnesty registration of pistol brace weapons. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be an amnesty registration, which means there's going to be a registration, which means I should freak out and buy <laughs> everything I can now, and ruin <laughs> the market. Right. So clearly, what you can see, if you look right here. Okay. Um, right here, I'm just, okay. Sorry, okay. Dogs. Uh -huh. Yeah. If you look right here, the, this portion I've highlighted for you audio listeners, this is the part that explains why you need to go to Walmart and buy all of the 22 long rifle. Okay. Immediately. Yeah. What does it say? What's the highlighted part? <laughs> oh, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Don't read it. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but, but no, seriously, you don't gain any actual information from this. You don't. All we know is that they would like to do this, and thus they will be collecting photos, something in relation to it. So then the response, the media response, uh, you know, in the gun community is, they're going to be all pistol brace guns, all of them. You're going to have to file a Form 1, and it's going to be free. And it's like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Amnesty registration does not say that it's going to be free. Exactly. 
As a matter of fact, it's more likely that they're going to say, once these are done being registered, we won't let anybody register. Like It might even go further right. than people realize. Like People are saying, oh, this obviously means we won't have to spend the $200, but right. I don't know, homie, that, that they've... Mm, let's talk about that in a minute because that's a a historical um situation as well so i was i was super frustrated with this i made a a video on fudbusters about it and you know i explained i was like one this is like let's look at the actual document which they did and so to john's credit he did embed the document right uh information collection request okay they're requesting the ability to collect information. Yes. And it's just like, this is a normal, repeated, uh, routine filing where, hey, we're going to be collecting information for regist- for Form 1s. We're going to be collecting. Uh-huh. And so it's all of the stuff about a Form 1. And there's one nugget that says, oh, hey, also, we would like to collect photos of the gun. Okay. For people to do this amnesty registration, whatever it is. This doesn't prove anything. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, it means it does mean they're considering it. Means they want to, right? right? And but so everyone's considering like, a lot of things. Everyone's like, "This is a new thing." Like, we gotta freak out. We gotta. It's gonna be free. It. It's gonna be free. Well, hold on. This is the rule from all the way in 2021. I remember this coming up, and everybody being very confused about all the elements in yeah. this. And right here it says, ATF requests comment on providing a tax forgiveness for the registration of short-barreled rifles pursuant to this proposed rules. So whatever this is, it has been contemplated in the rule since the initial draft. Right, but they see this. So what they're doing is they're interpreting this as a reinforcing statement, as in, ah, see, here it comes. We said it was coming and here it comes. Right. And, well, I don't think anyone remembers that this was there. Well, they must because it says tax forgiveness here. And when they saw amnesty, I guess they put those two together and decided that that was the zero cost part of it. But here's the thing. Everyone was saying that ATF like accidentally showed their hand in this filing. Like, you know, if you watch any of the videos, people are like, I bet they really regretted posting this because now we know. But we already knew this was, I remember this as part of the documentation. I literally the other day was thinking, are they supposed to be doing something about this pistol brace thing? Like I just was thinking about it the other day because it, can't, it went all the way back to this. We've right. known that this is a the direction they're going to go, and they're going to push, and then we're going to have to push back. And... and also, we have no idea how this amnesty. Like that, I think amnesty was just a short form used on that IC request. Right. Uh, for one. And, and, and like we've had amnesty registrations in the past. The purpose of those amnesties was saying, hey, you guys, you know, it's a federal, it's a it's a felony to possess these things without them being registered. We're gonna let you apply to register them, no questions asked. That doesn't mean yeah, that free. doesn't mean free money, right? Right. And then also when you look at the law, the law says the tax shall be collected and shall be paid by the maker. Uh, of course, there's a couple textual issues, right? Um, like, if you bought a pistol, you're not the maker. Uh, but there's the other loophole that I, I mentioned in my video on Fudbusters, which is that the government can ignore whatever provision of law it thinks uh, that the courts and people will not hold them to account for. So, I have a weird question about all of this. What? Did you ever in your research find a uh, document that went through any sort of either the legislature itself or a politician specifically referencing short barrel rifles and short barrel shotguns used by the mafia as being a reason for the NFA? No. This is something that I hear repeated all the time, and I'm still waiting for someone to produce a document. And to be frank, I haven't dug that deeply. I, I need. To no, I have dug. I know why they were at it. Yeah. Well, we both assume we know why we're at it. I'm just waiting for... Again, I'm holding out for one exception if somebody can point it out to me. And I don't know. Well, it's just, in the congressional record. I don't mean some journo, you know, cranking it out. I right. mean, is there a statement anywhere? Like we find letters about what the Second Amendment's intentions were right. that are not in the congressional record, right? But they're they're written by people to each other that were founding members of the United States. Right? Mm-hmm. So even something like that, just any hint that the concern was that there would be a short barrel rifle or short barrel shotgun in the way that we think of it is in a little tiny rifle. 
Okay. Right. Because what did you actually find, Matt? Let's just reiterate it one more time. What was the real reason for the short barrel shotgun and short barrel rifle in the NFA? <laughs> Thank you for that uh, wonderful uh, lead up. Well, I just want to remind everybody about this yeah. over and over and over again. Because, because yeah, I'm... no, you're right. Everyone keeps saying, and I can't stop hearing it. Well, no, it's because it's so deadly, right? And uh, the mobsters. The Valentine's Day massacre I hear yeah. all the time, but I don't know of any SBSs or SBRs that were used in that either. Well, no, because the mobsters, they chop down the shotgun, and then they go, you know, they go get them with it. And half the time when they chop those things down, they weren't, anyway. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they certainly weren't chopping rifles down. That's for sure, especially at that time. Um, <laughs> like that, that, that would not have been a thing. But I mean, the yes, reason a little bit, but not to where you guys are thinking. You no. guys are idiots that have the bullets sticking out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they were like, it's a little handier now. <laughs> like, yeah. Not, I want to. <laughs> they they're literally what's... doing it to shift the point of balance, yeah. and then you guys are like, now they can hide it under a six foot long trench coat. Yeah, they. they... <laughs> Yeah, now it's like, what's the case length of a uh, of five five six? Forty five millimeters? Okay, I want a forty six millimeter barrel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so okay. the The reason was the original drafts of the M NFA were to target what were perceived as the primary crime weapons of the time. Uh, which is which that? were, huh? What what was, what kind of weapon was the primary crime weapon at the time? Oh, the uh, the handgun. In terms of firearms, I'm sure hammers outrated. But... Oh, oh, right, right. And, yeah, yeah. In terms of firearms, right. Yeah. Uh, the fire primary crime firearms, which was handgun. What's the, uh, what's the primary crime firearm today? Oh, that would be the handgun. Oh, oh, okay. Wow. Yes, the hand Is pistol. Is that because it's the most actually horrible? this one specifically? This actual one here. This one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 the Glock 40. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, audio listeners, he held up a high point. Yeah, um, I, I've, I've kept that on my desk for like two years, and this is the first time I've had the opportunity to put the purple bullet in. <laughs> yeah, there? Uh, <laughs> the dome dome. No, let's be honest. They, the The whole point of the NFA was to target handguns. Yep. Which they that in the eleventh hour, the handgun stuff was removed, but right because it was so eleventh hour, they did not remove. Well, so the, we didn't actually say why they yeah, did I'm the SBR and SBS stuff. Yeah, so. They put in the handgun thing and they're like, look, this is going to take care of it. And machine guns were added largely in response to the journalistic response to the same Valentine's Day massacre. Um, but which, which, by the way, at least correlates like the idea does, that the, right. the Valentine's Day massacre call is causing machine guns to get added to the NFA makes complete sense. Right. The short barrel stuff. I'm confused. By doesn't make any sense. Uh, so the, the issue was some very smart politic lizards said, hey, you know, I like this law and it's good. But what's going to stop a man from taking, you know, like a Winchester and just cutting the stock off and cutting the barrel down? And then he's basically got a handgun. Right. Well, the idea. So this is where people get it right, because they think yeah. of the short barrel shotgun, short barrel rifle as being a law against concealability. Right. And they are right in that regard, in that handguns were considered a threat because they were concealable. That's what made them such. The idea was these are crime guns, because especially in cities. Right. You if you walked around openly carrying a firearm, people would know that you had the firearm and could choose what to do about that. Mm -hmm. So you, if you were doing a crime, you would conceal the firearm as part of any other criminal act. Concealing your intentions is part of a criminal act. Right. So you conceal the firearm like you would your intentions. And so, yes, in a sense, they were going to ban handguns because they were commonly used in crimes because they were concealable. And exactly. therefore, they didn't want short barrel shotguns, short barrel rifles being converted into handguns, which would then be concealed and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. The problem is there's this modern thing where people have decided that somehow during the NFA, everybody was okay with handguns, but were freaked out by having rifle power in a concealable package. They right. act, it's this assault weapons ban crap added retroactively. They say, oh, they must have not wanted school shooters to be able to sneak in 30 round whatever. Nothing was like that at the time. Police were issued Remington Model 8s with right. a four or five round magazine, you know? And that's the police. Uh, yeah. that no one's going around with what you guys are calling a high cap. And they're certainly not cutting those complicated systems down and smuggling them. They were worried about one or two shot little pistol things that people could be used to do a hold up job. And, and also, th they were worried, the guns they were most worried about were the cheap ones, which is why when they didn't get it, through the NFA, they took their second bite of the apple with the GCA to specifically prevent the importation of affordable handguns. Right. So, it, you know, it wasn't 
and you're right there's this weird i don't know it just amassed out of nowhere where they're like no the government knew you know, right. back they're, when they're, back they're when the standard to, infantry rifle was thirty inches they, long, they knew they, they were <laughs> fine with you having the Savage nineteen oh seven marketed as ten shots quick, right? Right. They were fine with you with a ten round staggered magazine pistol, but the idea that you had a double barrel that was sawed off was absolutely inhumane to them. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't fit. What fits is that they did the pistol thing because that was the threat. Right. Then they did an expansion of that. Then they argued over the core pistol issue and removed it and forgot to remove the expansion. The 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 SBS and SBR stuff, as far as we can see, is a complete appendix. It's and we've all been obeying it for no yeah. frigging reason for a hundred years. It's insanity. It's and so literally whenever, a do claw. And now we're all arguing about uh, reg amnesty registration over a way to bypass the quote unquote illegal. By the way, not even illegal, just a tax. It's not right. you're not not allowed to have it. You have to pay the tax. It's tax fraud. Not. But then we don't even. Nobody thinks of having an SBR right. that's unregistered as tax fraud. Yeah. But that's what we're. That's what it is. This, this is how garbage the whole thing's been twisted up, and it's because we're all willing to believe that this is somehow legislated as a ban and that we get special permission to have it. Technically, the way they wrote that crap before the 83 ban, they wrote yeah. it such that, no, you're absolutely allowed to have it. To not have it would be unconstitutional. Exactly. So this is just a tax. That's mm -hmm. all it is, just a tax. All this is is a tax fraud charge. But look what happened over time. They let the public perception, and I, even going back to the 40s and 50s in radio, I listen to a lot of stuff. They talk about having permits for firearms. And everybody talks about having a short barrel as if you're having a... They, everybody thinks of it like a permit. Yeah. yeah, they think about a license or a permit. It's not. It is, I paid my... It's a receipt. It yep. is a receipt for tax fraud or mm -hmm. lack of tax fraud. And yet we've let ourselves not only think that way, but because we think that way, we've let it go through courts that way. Yep. It's become a huge mess. No, and also, yeah. if it, 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 and now that I'm not beholden to anyone, I will, uh, I will happily say that, in large part, due to the dog shit lawyers that are hired by these alphabet soup gu gun rights groups that mm -hmm. don't bring this crap up, because guess what? These groups aren't run by gun people who don't understand what the heck is going on, and they certainly aren't hiring lawyers that have ever dealt with. Uh, you know, the distinction between an SBR and a pistol or whatever. But just think about how, this is how nuts this whole thing is, right? right. We start with, we start with the, the target of the law. And let's just hold this up. I'm holding up the high point again. Right. This is, the, you know, the 1934 equivalent of this was 100% the right. target. We're scared of little pocket 32. We're scared of that. We're scared of until the 60s. Right. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, no, the public support for banning all handguns was more than 60% until like the early, like 62. Uh, right. So <clears throat> that's the target. And then they say, right, right, right. So we're going to get that. But what if somebody has something that's, you know, like three times that size? But it, it, they can still get it under their coat, though, because they made it by cutting down a Remington Model 8 right. or whatever. So they're like, we're going to get that. Now, fast forward to now. Where the Supreme Court says that little thing, that little bitty boy, that's a hundred percent protected. No, and yeah, most states don't even have mag caps. Or exactly, you, you can put a stendo in that thing. <laughs> well, and shove but, it in your pants. Here's the really nutty part. Even now, even like if we accept all of this crap that the ATF put out in this rule changing as a hundred percent legitimate, it means that like here I'm going to hold it. This is this is registered. I went ahead and paid my tax, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. No, <laughs> um, the, it means the sole distinction on whether or not this should land you in jail, right, if you haven't paid a tax, is whether this has a flat piece on the back or it's just an exposed buffer tube. Right. The size and shape, the concealability, identical. <laughs> so here's the difference, the usability. And, and guess what? Usability had nothing to do. With right. the NFA. Right. So this is the problem, though, because th now we've come full circle. Guess what the enemy yep. is doing? The opposition is thinking correctly. They're going, hold on. What is the functional difference between X and Y? Mm -hmm. What is the reality of X and Y? What's the concealability of X? They're thinking it through. 
and using it to dismantle the tenuous relationship we have with our right because we were allowed to talk ourselves out of this. Right. Meanwhile, the gun community has not actually started thinking this through and going, wait a second, why the hell were these banned to begin with? <laughs> you know, it's it's bizarre, but the left has a better idea. In this case, the left being the left side of this issue. I'm sorry to make it left and right. I shouldn't because there's libertarians yeah. out there, but you get my idea. This This new left has this down to a pat. They're going, wait a second, you're not allowed to have this rifle so why the heck can you have this high capacity whatever pistol why can you have all this firepower if it just happens to fit in this certain size box you know or have these features right. this is insanity and the answer is like you're right it is insane why can't i have the other thing that why can't if i can have this why can't i have the double barrel cut down whatever you right. know what what is it that's broken here oh well, that's right the whole thing doesn't make sense and we need to push back and not just keep twisting ourselves up to try to comply yeah I, I, i'm looking for my thunder five uh in my <laughs> yeah 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 because it, it's basically it's the prototype taurus judge uh yeah, but we kissed it with rifling so therefore it's yeah pistol. so it's okay uh, what's it's the principal just... distinction anyway we could go on this forever yeah well, well, it, was, i really want to change... start saying this though no i want if anything if there's anything to take away from this conversation to spread to your friends to tell them never talk about having a machine gun license or a short barrel rifle license. Never say license. Yeah. Uh, never say permit. And it, honestly, you yeah. could say tax stamp. That's fine. Yeah. But I would start saying receipt. And I would honestly be saying it's the receipt for my poll tax. I mean, I would just say that <laughs> over and over. It's the, I got the receipt for my poll tax and then just, just grind it into their faces. Like the, the, so much of what we've dealt with in politics is people trying to change the names of things to force you to think about it the way they think about it. Let's mm -hmm. do it right back. It's a receipt. I've got my receipt. It's not my license. Yeah. It's not my permit. It's my receipt. That's true. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks, anyway. Douglas. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, hundred percent. Yeah. No, that, that's good. And actually, I, I think this is a great segue <laughs> because uh, <laughs> the, one of the guys at at SAF put out a, a thing this this week and i think that everyone who makes content in this space should probably read this okay. it is 10 tips for new gun writers podcasters and youtubers oh um and he, he's basically explaining like no i'm not new so i can ignore yeah. this yeah you can just yeah, do the opposite okay good okay. Uh, but yeah he's God. like they're noting this that anyone can say whatever the heck they want and they're farming outrage. All right, let's read the um, 10 tips. Are you ready? Yeah. Number okay. one, report, don't rewrite. We white? Rewrite. Rewrite. Yeah. Don't rewrite. Okay. okay, now we're to number two. Ask good questions. Uh-huh. I feel like those first two should just be notes for journalists. But, but I Well, I mean, journalism as a... Uh, you know, overarching discipline doesn't exist anymore. Oh, it's so. gone. Oh, it is way <laughs> <Zoop>. gone. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, you watch, uh, what is that guy's name? Um, oh, God, Veritas. Like, they do the hidden mm -hmm. camera stuff. They got a, they got some gotcha journalism going. And, and everybody gets mad, and they're like, they recorded people secretly and found out things. And you went, isn't that what the journalists used to do? They just <laughs> record, like They were like <laughs> spies back in the day, but now... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now they're just like weird paid assholes. They just repeat the. Is it true that so and so did this? I don't know. Let me ask their PR team. Oh, their <laughs> PR team says it's not true. Yeah. The fact check false. <laughs> and specific to the gun industry, I remember the first time I went to Media Day at Shot Show, and you'd see somebody, uh, you'd see some reporter that you had actually read their work and kind of respected them, and you see them on the range holding their gun like this, right, with their thumbs crossed <laughs> over. And then they like they shoot, miss the target dramatically. I never right. felt better about my shooting than my first media day at Chacho. And then they they put the gun down awkwardly, walk to the right, and somebody hands them a thumb drive with what they're going to say, and they take oh it. Oh my god! And that's... They got. Have you have you been? Thought. No, I've never. Been. I've had no need to go. Weirdly. Oh well, I mean, I, no one does. It's a it's a it's another vestige. But don't they usually do that kind of stuff over at Vegas? Yeah. Oh no, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I <laughs> I I went and I went and I I got some of these because I just thought it was well, one, I wanted the branded USB drives. Mm -hmm. and, and but imagine my I didn't know this of course when I was there, but I went over to my hotel, I put in one of the USB drives and it's a pre-written article. 
Oh my <laughs> god. Like, I was like, holy shit. Now wait, did they write the same article and hand it out to everybody? Because that would get really obvious. Yes. No, but that's the thing is it's like it's not a, like a complete article. It's like a bunch of grab points, right? So it's like it's like three times the length of a normal article. So you just take the paragraphs that you like. Oh my god. And then I started looking and I'm like, holy shit. Like, really? People get paid to do this. How come I can't get paid more to do that? Because I do kind of get paid <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, 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 next tip. This is number three. Was Wait a second, public how record. easy is that? Right, we rep Patriot Patch Company, right? Yeah, yeah. Did they give us anything to say? No, we never get. It. We have to make up. Do you understand? Every time I've been on here, I've had to help you make up crap to say about the stuff that people could buy to support the show. Yeah, I we make it, it up ourselves. Why aren't we getting this stuff? Give excuse me. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah. make me Why sound are we funny. Doing actual work. <laughs> Well, I mean, that is the best way to do it, though. Like, if you ever watched Internet Historian, like, I'm sure they provide, like, you know, uh, NordVPN definitely provides canned things, but Internet Historian does not read them. <laughs> I've uh, I've been in an Internet Historian video now. Really? Yeah, one of our POVs got snatched for the oh. uh, the Pirates one. Yeah. And they used one of our POVs for it, and I was like, that's okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. It's parody. It's good. It's covered. Uh, actually, no, we should we should have a thing where I send a letter just giving them permission. I don't know. I was oh, just to be like, hey, I saw this. Good job. Yeah. Well, and, and it also preserves your rights. That's oh, that's, uh, that's an interesting thing. Like, um, uh, one way to prevent M uh, squatters' rights. Like, if you notice that somebody like you've got a squatter on your property and you're concerned uh, that you know in your state, some states have yeah. Uh, it's the, 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 so you give them permission in that way. You yeah, you put up a little permission. sign saying, you know, the the shit ass squatting in this tent has my permission to stay here, and they can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it kills their whole claim. Nice. <laughs> or, or yeah, or like you know, and I've I've told people they're like, there's somebody driving up and down the side of my property. I'm like, put a sign saying, I welcome the truck that drives up and down this property until we find out who it is, and then we'll tell them to stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting an easement that way. Uh, but anyway uh so yeah the next one was use public documents uh okay. which fine yeah whenever possible i try to use official documents as a basis for my stories after i verified the, their authenticity again something that would exist in the overarching standards of journalism if it was a discipline mm -hmm. um <laughs> research libel law oh <laughs> 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 uh, nope no they won't do that actually edit your work no publish on multiple platforms monitor your responses so like yeah if people are very mad at you constantly you might be doing something wrong uh write follow-up stories do investigative reporting no uh absolutely not and oh and he wants he wants money um but whatever uh but yeah i i don't know i, I just think that that's a that's something that we can all just remember um, and I guess if I were to give the the Fudbusters school of modern, um, or, no, the Fudbusters school of vintage journalism, okay, uh, like don't lie, just try not to lie, and if you don't know what something says, talk to somebody who does, mm. <laughs> and, and like that then you're. I'm not saying you're evil if you don't do it. I'm saying you're the quality of your product will be much higher um unless and there's a big exception if you outwardly like claim yourself to be a muckraker or a uh, gonzo journalist that's cool but like openly say that's what you're doing no <laughs> just yell that you have integrity while you do whatever <laughs> I'm practicing gonzo journalism. Like, just I say it, that I once. I took a picture of myself and I photoshopped the word integrity over it, and now I can do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> yeah, because I'm I'm the guy. I'm the one. <laughs> yeah, I got integrity. All right. Well, speaking of just wonderful things, um, <laughs> did you see this yeah, one? I saw the title. What the hell? Is going on <laughs> so, like, okay, what, have okay, you been? First through... of all, hold on. Before we go, can we can we establish the state of the union? Uh, before we go any further, do we know what state this was in? Uh, let's, oh yeah, let, Nebraska. Uh, no, Omaha. Oh, Omaha. I'm sorry. Yeah, Nebraska City, City. Omaha. Okay, that's not confusing, guys. Thanks. Yeah, that. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is so good. So, like, 
I'm sure you guys out there have. When's the last time you heard of Omaha in the news? Yeah, uh, well, maybe he was out for it, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of you guys have gone through the like wonderful, uh, totally useful experience that is like an active shooter drill or like a, the code red drills. In, I never uh, had public that. school. Did you? Have you that? didn't. No, oh. I. Um, Columbine happened while I was in high school. Oh, so. No, we never had an active shooter drill. Oh, if dude. we did, I mean, it probably would have been like run to the parking lot and get your shotgun out of the trunk because yeah. half of us had them. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm not that old, but being in the you know semi rural South, the, yeah, there were still plenty of shotguns in the trunks at school. So I was in, I was in, I, I guess I was at the early stages of this where they didn't call them shooter drills; they were code red drills. Oh, and uh, the <laughs> like Mountain Dew. <laughs> the... That was before that. Uh, the code. <laughs> did they give you Doritos? And then asked... <laughs> no, what they did was we were all <laughs> code red. Everybody to your Xbox. No, we your were Dorito all to bag. hide under our desks. <laughs> Half of it. With breathe it in. Literally, you... we were to hide under our desks with our eyes closed and our hands on our heads. How the hell does that help? Yes. Wait, that's the same drill as duck and cover for the atomic bomb. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> when I was at when I was in elementary school, they were still doing that because there was still um, a USSR briefly. So, well, I've um, heard now they do a different stuff with like active shooters. And any all this stuff does is traumatize kids and makes them believe that you have more than a one in eleven point six million chance every year of of being to, involved in any kind of mass casualty. We would do injury. tornado slash atomic bomb drills because the response is the same. <laughs> What? And then I love that the schools are like, okay, we're having all these school shootings. So what do we do? Uh, with that other thing, what the, the thing that we, we always do? Uh, we hide. We, we have two options: hide under the desk where we are, or go stand in the same place at the bleachers. And oh, uh, that was another thing that we would do during the code red. Everyone would have to walk single file right. along to the the outside fence. That's so stupid. Do it's they not, brilliant. Do they not understand Enfilad? Like. <laughs> It's, no, it's perfect. Yeah, it's good. No, it's brilliant. Would, uh, I remember they would have these bomb drills where they'd make you go outside. Sue's got in trouble because uh, when she was in school, because she's told the story before, she got in deep shit because they did the bomb drill for the fourth time that year. And she mm. was talking to some friends of hers too close to a teacher or whatever. And she said, this is stupid. It's really hard to place a bomb in the school, but it'd be stupid easy to place one in the bleachers and then call in a bomb threat and everybody just comes out here like they always do. And, <laughs> like, whoa, whoa, and they start freaking out and start yelling at her. And she's just like, isn't this the most obvious thing? It's it's the remote area where no one would notice you placing the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> like, trying and to they get were mad at her? the building with all the walls to get in the way. That's stupid. Just put it under the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so let's talk about the news story. Um, active shooter drill ends in criminal charges for instructor. Oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah. So what, how, what is the nature of this drill? An Omaha man hired by a nonprofit in Nebraska City is now, or no, in the Nebraska City? I don't understand. Yes. Is now facing charges of terroristic threats and illegal use of a weapon after okay. conducting an active shooter drill where neither police nor the nonprofit's employees were aware of what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Go <laughs> So yeah, the drill at Catholic Charities took place just five days after the shooting at the Topps grocery store in Buffalo, New York, in which 10 people were murdered. According to authorities, officials at the charity had decided earlier in the year to put on an active shooter drill, but were at a loss as to how to go about it. <laughs> well, I know one way not to. <laughs> uh, we, uh, so yeah, apparently this is... Let's make it a yeah. realistic drill. We'll get, <laughs> get so their security anymore. guard suggested hiring this guy Okay. Um, <laughs> plan to start. <laughs> Wait. Uh, so the guy had claimed to have conducted other drills just like this and that law enforcement would be present during the training event and would even participate and play along with the scenario. <laughs> it was stated that this man would, he planned to start by shooting victims outside of the office windows and doors to be viewed by employees, then make him his way through the building with keys provided by staff hoping to cause employees to flee from the building or hide. Oh, my God. 
Did nobody, by the way, nobody shot back at this idiot? Walter stated that Channels, this is the guy Channels, specifically stated he did not want the staff to be informed that the scenario was only a drill and wanted to feel as though as they were in danger. Oh my God. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> wow. This sounds like the type of dude the security guy would be like, you got to hire my guy. He knows what he like. He's got some ideas. <laughs> You're like the one teacher that's like low key carrying anyway. Yeah, you just vent this dude. He turns out to be. <laughs> Can you imagine? Right. Can you imagine? Because you like that's how lucky is that dude? Some people right. have yet to return to work. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, man. oh, did he have blanks or did he just discharge into the air like a maniac? I don't. Know. There's not enough detail about this. I swear no, to God, no, it's like, not. Like... There should be more. You know what is sufficiently detailed though? Hmm. Uh, sorry, did you miss the good part of this? I guess I did. What, what is it? Channel is not only facing charges related to his drill. Two weeks after the exercise of Catholic Charities, he was arrested on charges of child abuse and sexual assault. <laughs> How, why would you let him in? Oh, the complaint has now been amended to add a charge of producing child pornography. Wow. And this just... guy, I mean, clearly they went on Angie's list to check this guy, right? Like, do you think that they actually hired him for the drill, or do you think he said, this will be great, gonna... we'll do it this way? And they went, no. And they, cause it doesn't actually say whether or not he got permission, right? <laughs> it's really light on very specific details. <laughs> that makes it better. Oh, man. I mean, that's horrible, right? Like, it's disgusting. Like, you didn't that... traumatize kids enough with the gun and, you know. The, yeah, you had to go and do the other thing. You had to thing. go actually, like, assault one. Yeah, he had to go play a Cody Wilson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I feel like I have to let that cool off before I do the next ad read. <laughs> he met a new girlfriend while doing the drill. <laughs> So speaking of uh, pedophilia, VZ Grimstock. <laughs> <laughs> look at this! You, you believe this? This is oh, look, wrong guy. Look at me. That's you. That's you. Hold on. Yeah. That, uh, that's me. This is. Look at this. This is great for venting, uh, you know, abusers. And if it would only come in focus, if it would only there it is, ish, whatever. Uh, this. Is my Smith and Wesson N prefix N frame equipped with VZ grips, Coyote Brown 320 uh, pattern grips? These, and I actually, I I just bought these myself. Uh, they're they're fantastic. I'm I'm a huge fan of of these guys' products, and they're on a lot of OEM guns. So if you are trying to get a set of grips for your uh, pedo ventilator, I. I... <laughs> <laughs> So here's the thing. You really don't want uh, your pure rage transmitted into sweaty palms to ruin your exactly. uh, pedo marksmanry. Right. So. And this is the 320 pattern, which is their least aggressive pattern. Gross. And even still, I I lack the masculine strength to pull it from my own hand. Yeah, he has butter fingers dipped in Vaseline. <laughs> and he burned off all of his fingerprints because he didn't want them to know who he was when he filed his tax stamp. Do you know what caliber this is? Is that no, frame? Oh. 45 Colt. <gasps> wow. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Now, that's hard to hold on, but it's a lot easier to hold on to when you have VZ grips. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 45 Colt can be loaded to above Magnum, uh, 44 Magnum. Well, yeah, if you just keep shoving powder in there. Sure. <laughs> Well, like, yeah, they, and and I, I discovered I was like, oh, I finally got an end grain, but it's just, it's just forty five. And then I I go online, and there's other people who had the same issue, and they're like, you can almost use the Thompson Contender loads, almost, <laughs> <laughs> and those are like pissing hot. Uh, let's see if they added anything new. Ooh, there's a new Hydra dagger. Okay, I never saw that before. Oh, it's gone. Wilson now. Combat X nine grips. Okay. K and L frame boot grips. Oh, 
You know revolvers. What is that? Uh, it's for your boot. Oh, like it looks is very it... smooth. It's got like a nice hook to it for being able to drag it out of somewhere. Yeah. I okay. Like and yeah, it's available in diamond. I don't know what the knife thing was, but it's gone now. You clicked away. I can put it back. I'm able to do that. What was the knife? Executive thing? Hydra. Look at that. Okay. It's a G10. Oh, it's, it's is it made entirely out of plastic? It's made of their G10 thingus. Oh, that makes me think that you could go through those things you're not supposed to go through. <laughs> oh, no, whoa, guys, whoa. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Just wait a minute. Don't say that part out loud. <laughs> but it's a... <laughs> <laughs> I have one of their stabby pencils. That thing looks is... like you could really tear up a pool liner. <laughs> You can get the sheath. It's only ten dollars, or the an sheath. IWB. The the sheath is metal, though. <laughs> you gotta comply with the ghost no, knife regulations. No, no. <laughs> but hey, if you go on VZ Grips and you want to save some money, you want to sell them that old. Tell them that old Matt sent you. You're gonna say this week fifteen in the coupon department. T h i s w e e k one five. Get yourself a nice set of 320 grips. That's my recommendation because uh, the, the overly aggressive grips, they kind of hurt my little paws. Hmm. Uh, the 320s are almost smooth, but they've just got just enough texture to where it just like it, it just holds nice. As I, an I adult really male, uh, my pistol has VZ grips of the most aggressive texture. Fuck you. All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, also, I like the 320 grip because that's the only way that you can properly engrave waifus onto it. Mm. There's another beautiful VZ grip. That's the thing you I can know. request if you tell them Matt sent you. Yeah, and give them like probably a lot of money. I <laughs> <laughs> probably don't want to do that again. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the next news item. Oh, this is like, oh, this is new gun, new gun alert. New gun. New gun. New gun. New gun, new gun alert. New gun alert. New gun. Okay. New gun. It's the ultimate range companion. Okay, tell me, what caliber would be your ultimate range companion? Uh, uh mine. Yeah. Hmm. Probably one of those really popular normal calibers, so like two yes, three or nine millimeters uh -huh. or forty-five AARP. Yeah. That would be big. That would be a so good idea. So this is one of those, right? Yep, yep. And what kind of magazines would it take? Would it take the regular ones or some oh, kind yeah, of like, special edition? Well, I think most people would want Glock mags, Glock mags. Or, or Stanag. Or something like that. Or right. just a, a kind of very affordable regular mag that is right. not, like not this. A, yeah. So The Ultimate uh, Range Companion. <laughs> uh, this appears to be a 5.7 pistol that they slapped a bunch of stuff on. Yeah, so they, it's like look at the 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 grip. It just it, it literally actually is looks five, like seven. It, it like well, it couldn't be because of the way they like the way the barrel floats on the five seven. So this is just some even more direct blowback version of it. But when you look at the the grip, it actually looks like there's a five seven pistol like hiding in there. Yeah, it looks like a macaroni with a five seven stuff. There. Yeah. It's just hiding in there. They uh, should have done that. That's what they should have done. They should have made a 5.7 macaroni. <laughs> Look at that charge. Look at that foul charging handle. I mean, I'm fine what the that. hell were they thinking? Is that so, yeah, this is or non reciprocating? If that's looks reciprocating, non -reciprocating. That's terrifying if it's reciprocating. <laughs> it's terrifying. Uh, Can you imagine yeah, that... if you're like, I'll have you right at your face. So, yeah, this is what Ruger thinks you need for your range trip. You need. <laughs> A extra large Ruger 5.7 with a 16 inch barrel, uh, folding stock, uh, and like, how much does it weigh? I don't know. I don't. Bunch. You know what I don't hate? I don't hate the in the sense that they made it the pistol into a little rifle thing. Yeah. I like that it has the mags in the grip still. Yeah. I because don't hate that's that. at least a legitimate use of 5.7. If they had done mag forward, you would just go, why? Yeah. Not receiving anything. <laughs> Oh, and also the bullet needs to go speedy uh, yeah. to do the funny thing that we want it to do. Uh, you mean defeat Russian body armor from the 1950s? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't do that either. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, the... <laughs> well, so yeah. And the price, I mean, what would you pay for a gun like that? 
Uh, literally dozens of dollars. <laughs> I so I will tell you, like speaking of of, of handguns that have a uh, magazine in the grip. That so the safety a, is literally the handgun safety. I want to point out. Yeah, I'll, it, and there appears to be two of them. It has a uh, slide, no, it has the safety no, and then the slide release. Yeah, it's got a handgun slide release on a That's charging so handle gun. It's so stupid. They took the hand. They it's literally the mold from the pistol grip. Yeah. And this is hiding. It's hiding in this big aluminum box. Right. They just it's a macaroni, but you can't yeah. detach it. Yeah. That's terrible. Uh is but speaking of do you think there's a slide in there? I think it no, because the original five seven pistol had the barrel would float and would uh, reciprocate with the bolt for like ten millimeters, and they did that not tell me like five millimeters. They did that so they could get the slide lighter. I think at this point they just made it a full regular blowback bolt. Okay, but that's definitely the lower from the pistol. And it's I I mean it I wouldn't be surprised if they like repurposed like the first mold, <laughs> the pistol. You know. Yeah. But it's it's the same geometry there for sure. Um, I was I was trying to say there are examples of this concept that are good where it's in a stupid caliber and it takes a funny magazine, right. and that is what I just bought the High Point ten nine five. That is the best three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, that's expensive as crap. Those High Point carbines are neat, and it's ten millimeter. Right. So like, what's this? What's this cost? This MSRP is nine hundred and seventy nine U.S. dollars. Oh, I thought it was going to be a thousand. That's so much better. <laughs> and it, and, it, and it, it's a five seven. So all, so yeah. Well, don't so you worry. Get, Once you fill up your first mag, you'll be well over a thousand dollars. Also, you can get those blue tips just in case the popo show up. <laughs> this is a no, stupid gun. No, if you want one, you're dumb. Over. Yeah. <laughs> Use a stupid bad gun. Um, do, do you? Would you even want to even try it? Or I mean, yeah, know. if it's somebody else is paying for the ammo, yeah, that's fair. I'm not, I'm not a fan of five seven. If I'm honest, like I, I understand what it was attempting to do, but I think it ultimately failed to do it, and therefore you put up with a lot yep. when you you could just use a different cartridge and actually get what you want. I <clears throat> agree, but I have one. So here's the thing. If 22 oh, no. TCM didn't exist, there would be a purpose for 5.7. Right. Um, but right now, like, what you do with 5.7... Most people really off the cuff think of 5.7 as a body armor defeating yeah. cartridge, and it's not. It's not. Apparently. not especially no. not the way armor is being made now. Um, uh, so... And here's the thing. When you go and shoot steel with a 5.7... It doesn't make noise. So it's like the least satisfying experience. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's you know what I want is I want like low amounts of damage and over and high over penetration on a fleshy target, but then no gain on an armored target. Yeah. Anyway, let's move I on. I think we should just week. all go around with a hot loaded 45 Colt, because even if they're wearing armor, it's gonna hurt real bad. Yeah, yeah that's why <laughs> I got the end frame. I'm you know, maybe I'll get one of them contenders now. And, like uh, with a contender, you can put as much smokeless as you want in that case. <laughs> it's not gonna break. <laughs> Both. <laughs> next, next up, uh the mayor of Philly. He says that look at this guy, look at this guy, isn't he cute? Mm -hmm. Uh he says that Pennsylvania is backwards. Oh no, due to guns. So criticizing. State's gun laws. Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney on Wednesday called Pennsylvania a backward state and said its legislature, for the most part, doesn't care about its citizens. Oh, no. <laughs> Made these comments to NBC10 and Telemundo62 uh, at, when asked about support of stricter gun laws in a shooting that happened or uh, whatever. And he responded, we're not going to get gun control in Pennsylvania. Good. This is a backward state whose legislature, for the most part, doesn't care about the health and welfare of its citizens. Good. We have too many people anyway. I don't understand. This is the same people that tell me there's too many people on the planet Earth, and we all need to have fewer children, and blah blah blah. Yeah. And then a couple, like a couple people, get blown away, and then they're going, "Oh, we got to preserve every life." <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, hold up. 
What did you, what did you mean oh, by that? You want, you want everybody to be alive, but not everybody? I'm confused. Yeah. Just like, it was, it was, yeah. Like, well, no, we want you to stop making them. <laughs> something, something over. Look, I don't like it that people get smoked that don't deserve to get smoked. That's, I get yeah, it. They, it's not good. That's uh, why I stay strapped because I don't want to get smoked. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, it's literally, that's what I've always told people. Like, oh, it really upsets me. Oh. Uh, there's something that really upsets me because my never mom. I've seen you upset before. No, you haven't. My mom is such a good woman and she's generally very smart and logical right and she as i was going to visit her she was talking to me about how they were attacking schools uh or no not schools they were attacking churches the they this ubiquitous day and she's like she's telling me because i i go to a black church the, the bad men yeah i go to a black church and she's like they're specifically targeting black churches aren't you worried they did that that one time that was here (laughs) Yeah. Um, and I was like, everybody got mad. Not, not really. She's like, why? I'm like, well, one, you know, here's the, the rates or whatever. Uh, two, I carry a gun everywhere I go. And you know what she responded to that with? You're going to carry a gun to church? <laughs> well, you did say that they were targeting the churches. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes. I carry it everywhere. She goes, even when you come to see me? Yes. And, and bear in mind, this woman has a gun. You should have said especially you. That would <laughs> Especially you. <laughs> She's like, you're going to have a gun on you when you're spending time with your mother? And I'm like, would you rather? So I'm driving How to my mother's shop. How do you get to and from your mother? I don't understand. <laughs> well, then I said, I said, you know, so when I'm driving to my mother, should I take off my seatbelt just because I, I wouldn't want to get into an accident? Like, yeah, it's I don't know, people are. It's one of those things. Where it's like, do you, I, I feel like having a fire extinguisher doesn't mean I'm an arsonist. Yeah. You have a fire extinguisher right now, yeah. In case of fires, you're gonna light me on fire. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, me, it, it's <laughs> something car, that doesn't make any it's sense. So, it's so weird because I feel like people would be like, "God, your car's such a piece of shit that you need a fire extinguisher in it." <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's not just for mine. Someone else. I, I'm on the highway and I see cars on fire and I stop and I say, I have a fire extinguisher. Right. You need help? You know? Well, and also it hasn't been used because my car is that much of a piece of shit yet. Right. <laughs> the day may come. <laughs> you never know. Like I keep yeah. fire extinguisher. I know idiots with tracers when I'm at the range yeah. sometimes, you know, I keep a little <laughs> fire extinguisher with me in my truck. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I, ex- <laughs> I'm not hoping for a fire. You know, what I think yeah. about it at night. I just lay there with my pants sorted down <laughs> thinking about, how there's going to be a fire and I'm going to put it out and the lady with the big boobs is going to be so happy that I put out yeah. that fire. She's going to be like, I can't believe you brought a fire they, extinguisher. They, they accuse you of thinking about being a hero because yeah. you have a gun. It's I don't think about that either. You there's, know, one person said, one person told me when uh, I was on, it was on TV on some DC program and they were talking about Chicago and how bad it is, right? Right. And I'm like, yeah, no, it would be really great if they didn't systematically prevent these people from protecting themselves. She goes, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, it's almost impossible, you know, for many of these people who are affected to get a firearm for these reasons. And she just, right. she stops me and she goes, this isn't Carl on duty. What? Or, you know, <laughs> that's how I always refer to Call of Duty. She said, this isn't Call of Duty. Okay. And I'm like, what? Well, yeah. <laughs> She's like, you're not going to just, what you think is you got a gun, you're just going to be able to go and, and and just get everybody? And I'm like, holy shit. No, you, <laughs> like, you stay home, and when they come in, <laughs> you blast them. Yeah, no, you literally back yourself into a corner and watch the door, which is a legitimate Call of Duty strat, uh, but but not the way you're thinking. <laughs> if I get ten in a row, can I drop <laughs> Yeah, I want the UAV. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right, so going back to more funny things in Pennsylvania, right? Because the state is so backwards. How about this story? Pennsylvania high school mistakenly gets shipment of guns. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. He's the best photo for this. Look at how that guy does not give a... <laughs> yeah, he's like, whatever. It says okay, the address here. Not my problem. <laughs> I, got a, I got a time crunch. Um, yeah, so basically they accidentally delivered a shipment of firearms to the school um, because of a typo. And they're like, uh, 
Students will be back on campus and roaming the halls in a matter of days, making a recent delivery one of, to one of Delaware County High School even more shocking. Do the kids Fox. open the packages? What the? No. I don't remember any students opening packages that were shipped to my high school. Yep. Uh, box of rifles were recently dropped, and that's the grammar that's used. Box of rifles were recently dropped at the doors of Chester High School. The delivery was made Friday and locked inside the school over the weekend. Okay. Of course, they left it at the door over the weekend. Yeah, there, there's three, there's just six rifles or whatever. Um, that's what they do at my place. They just leave, no matter how much it says adult signature required, they just leave it at the damn. Yeah, they, they sure do. But uh, I love that this is uh, one Pennsylvania, two UPS involved because we go to the next bit. UPS has released their new ship uh, rules for shipping firearms. I like this picture. It's a picture of a German UPS truck completely in uh, <laughs> in flames. Uh, uh -huh. So they got, we got a couple up updates. I'm sure you guys remember the reporting earlier about UPS like freaking out yeah they uh, used to make you go to their whatever shipping center yeah and well then, that was just for firearms themselves right but now not they hate and them. ammunition yeah well now there's new stuff there's three oh. updates this was uh uncovered by mr lee williams mm -hmm. uh the terms of service oh no term <laughs> i hate that word you can't yeah you can't break that uh Packages it's, containing firearms. If, if only the Constitution had included something about terms of service. <laughs> because, uh, well, so packages containing firearms, as defined federally, yeah. and firearm parts that do not con constitute firearms, as defined by federal law, together, firearm products are accepted for transportation only as a contractual service and only from shippers who are licensed importers, manufacturers, dealers, or collectors. What's a license collector? Are they talking the about CNR. the CNR? Yeah. Um, the <laughs> so in order to ha ship any gun parts, you have to enter into an approved contract for the transportation of gun par par uh, parts. And in this contract, they basically say that any, uh, you know, item that meets the definition of a firearm, blah, blah, blah frame or receiver. So this is obviously <laughs> getting at the Including age. mufflers or silencers. Yeah. Uh, and so frames and receivers must be uh, identified and bear a serial number in satisfaction of the requirement for identifying such items under federal law. That's not true, but okay. Regardless of whether any such items are otherwise exempt from or not subject to the requirements under applicable law. There's lots of unserialized guns, but anyway. Yep. That's it. Yep. Is FedEx doing something like this? I thought I heard FedEx was acting weird too. I, I didn't hear anything about it. And this, then the shipping agreement is like you have to develop your own shipper compliance program. Like this is just stupid. Wait, what's a shipper compliance program? What the hell does that mean? It must include one, training for sales and marketing employees regarding lawful recipients, possessors, and purchasers of firearm products. Two, due diligence regarding customer license licensure or authorization to receive possess and purchase firearm products under applicable federal state or local law and three oh self-assessments of the shipper compliance program to guarantee its effectiveness this really reeks of operation choke point style crap it's like oh you, you know what ups i forgot i thought that i was paying you money to move a box i forgot i forgot that you were gonna pay does, me to do this does thing ups have protections like a common carrier protections of some sort yes so wouldn't this be yes never mind you know, it didn't work for tech companies. I don't think it'll work here, right? We just continue yeah, just to shoot be... yourself right in the foot and murder your customer. Uh, see matter. if the government's happy if you do that. Right, it doesn't matter that they don't care because I, this is the thing. I the, you know what it is? This is why I do not want driverless cars. Yep, because the, the minute there's driverless cars, they will say, "Well, we can't have driver cars out there because the driverless cars are better at it." And then they'll have cars as a service immediately. No one will yep. own a car. It'll be within six months of driverless cars. Uh, that, that's and I, I've I've said this many times, but like that is one thing that would just totally activate me. Well, driverless I, cars will destroy the Second Amendment. I guarantee yep. you, because they'll put it in the terms of service, no firearms, and right. then every single car company will say that, and no one will sell you a car unless it's some 
crazy. Numbers. Yeah, no, it'll be like the the blue dog equivalent, right? Where it's, right. it's like seven hundred dollars a minute. Right. Um. But, but I no, if they do that, if they start to, like, they try to tell me I can't drive something carbureted. I'm activating like that. <laughs> That's it. So wait, what else do we have? We have uh, one more. Oh, one more. There's one more thing. And then you guys Palm... are free. <laughs> You're all free. <laughs> Don't leave now. <laughs> yeah, you have to wait, okay? Yeah. Polymer 80. They're responding to the ATF's new frame or receiver definition. This is something a lot of us have been waiting to see. And it's like basically just rolling over and dying. Wait, option... what did they give up? <laughs> well, option one. Wait, whose options are saying these? Who's these saying are... the options? Huh? This is Polymer 80. Yeah, Polymer 80 is saying to the ATF, you have no, to no, 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 to the customer. Oh, okay. So yeah. Polymer 80 is saying to their customers due to the ATF. Yep, exactly. Okay. Option one, you can get an unserialized 80% frame with the rail and locking block, but no jigs or tools. Can't have it. Okay. Option two, you can buy a serialized frame that does include a jig, tooling, rear rail, and locking block. Um, so it's basically the old polymer. Yeah, but they added a cereal. Yeah, it's got a cereal. Uh, option three is the Build Back Better kit, which is a that's a funny thing, a funny politic joke they did. Okay. Includes everything in option two plus a slide <laughs> and everything you need to build a complete serialized firearm. My question is, why the hell would you buy? I'm so confused. Serialized eighty so, percent. Is it? Do you have to transfer it as a firearm? Yes. So why would you make it an 80%? I'm so confused. The way this is worded, it makes me think, okay, they're, so they're selling it as a non-firearm, but it has a serial as some sort of weird negotiation with the ETF. But no, you have to go through an FFL to do option two and three. Yep. Are you sure about that? I guess that's what makes them, like... Well, that maybe... is what makes sense. Because, well, no, ATF, like, it was very clear that the Palmer 80 was, like... They were well, the what target. if ATF realized that they couldn't defeat them constitutionally, so instead they were just like, well, we'll just make you serialize these things to the customer data. That way we can always track it back that way. In other words, they could do a trace. On they couldn't do a trace, a though. They could do a... Because no well, you have to have a it. dealer transaction, and like that's the whole thing they were getting at here. No, no, because if they find a Polymer 80, they just read the serial number on the Polymer 80 and call Polymer 80 directly. Do you see what I'm saying? Like I do see what you're saying, but the ATF. But they're, they're but Polymer 80 is making you go through an FFL to do option two and three. Yes. So that's the, the only point. way that would. That I'm would... trying to imagine a scenario in which there is any value to the the twenty percent or the eighty so percent. Here's why. Okay. Because. Like what? So here's the thing. Doing... ATF's rules said, and this is my theory crafting, right? We don't know whatever. Okay. Um, ATF said. Whether or not the like frame by itself will be considered a firearm will depend on the availability of tooling and jigs and, and stuff like that. So if they're not selling the jig on its own, right? Like, so basically they're making it so you Am can't I get the... Am or should they have just opened up another company called well, the Jigamer 80? Yeah, I mean, that, would, then, that would be one thing. But I think the, the idea they here... Why break into two companies and just F the ATF? I think that's a funny way to do it. I, I, but I... I because the whole problem, all the ATFs got on them is like, well, you've got it all in one kit. Yeah. There's no problem with the individual components. Okay, great. Now we're two companies. Tom runs the other company. <laughs> good luck, Tom. Hey, by the <laughs> way, Tom, this is our new product. Could you make a jig for us? Yeah. Wow. It's a good time for me to make that jig, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting way. I'm sorry. Did I, am I, did I just pass the genius list or something? Like, what the hell, Paul? No, no, I mean, I, I've been... sending 80% complete <laughs> firearms under a stupid friggin' FFL when you could have just given Bob for marketing the keys <laughs> to his own little kingdom and then rented <laughs> half the space in the factory? Like, I There are some legal issues there, but they would totally be able to be got around. Yeah. I mean, you would have to set up a whole new company that is 0% of the same stuff so you couldn't, like... Yeah, have piercing stuff. But guess what? Okay. Polymer 80 can afford lawyers. I'm sure they could have afforded to just do that. Oh, I know a lawyer that they could afford. <laughs> but like, yeah, no. If, if it would me, if if it were me, yeah, I would call it. I would. I would like suddenly somebody would have a very angry day at the board meeting and leave, and he'd be like, you know, you guys are stupid. I'm starting up Polymer Twenty right up the street. Yeah. 
I'm going to make jigs. <laughs> Just jigs. I'm going to compete with you in the jig market. <laughs> jig market. Because you're stuck having to sell that whole stupid cereal thing. You're stupid. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to make the jigs separate. <laughs> yeah. I imagine the way they're doing it now is to get you to buy... Buy a serialized one to get the jig and the thing. Jig, and then go back yeah. and buy a bunch of the other ones. Like, that's what they're yeah. going to do. But it's almost dumber than... Because yeah. then your data is... making Parliament 20. Well, because then the ETF's just going to sniff their accounts yeah. on the fact that you ordered both things. Well, and then they've got... Because your credit card company is one of your biggest enemies right. here. They've got that transaction tied to the thing that's connected to your FFL. And, and then, then what they they'll go, say is that you bought it all as a kit. And yep. blah, 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 but... Yeah, it's better for the consumer if it's two separate companies because then you go, yeah, I wanted to make one, so I bought this thing, then I went and bought the jig, and then I went and bought the Dremel, and then I went, and yeah. bought, you know, what I mean, it's, uh, I decided to make a firearm and went to multiple people to buy the things to yeah. make the thing. Okay, done. <laughs> you know, like although let's well, what we're stepping over one thing here is like we've kind of accepted uh, in our discussion here the ludicrousness of like why it would even matter that it's at two different companies. Well, because in the, the ETF is trying to basically... Right, but how clown really, shoes is that? Like They're really trying to imply constructive intent, but yes, the constructive which isn't real. intent was always there. No, but it was always there. So the problem, yeah. is, it's the, the problem is you made it too easy. I mean, it's the whole... You know what, the pro yeah. you know what I hate about this whole thing? My homie, uh, who... I believe you've been talking to actually. He got into three D printing. I told him to go hang out in your server, but my homie here in town showed up with a custom Glock that he had made. He had bought the slide from wherever, and he had done like a nylon print, three D printed lower. It felt like velvet. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. How hard is that? I mean, he's sitting in his air conditioning, poking some buttons until he gets the moisture and resin stuff equaled out, and mm -hmm. then he prints a couple little blocks. And he goes, "Oh, this is good." And then he <laughs> makes a firearm. Who cares about how hard it is? The design goal yeah. for a firearm is to make it easy to construct and yet reliable. So, of course, they would have known eventually it would be easy to make them. <laughs> <laughs> Stop using logic. Right. But how does it make you feel? That's this whole stupid thing. We already have laws about selling them around too. You're yep. not supposed to just start manufacturing them without serial numbers. Which, by the way, the whole no, this whole thing, like look, the whole trace, you know, the real so thing, utterly dubious. That it's oh, it doesn't do anything. Legal. It's it's it BS. Does F all. All it is is icing yeah. on the cake when they're already prosecuting the guy. I've got a friend in ballistics who says if that, that. He, he can pin down cases from around our county to like seven or eight crimes to one guy, and he'll eventually snatch the guy. And he'll be like, ah, this was the gun. I finally found the guy that was involved in these seven freaking shootings. <laughs> and every time the prosecutors go, now nah, we're just going with the one. We're negotiating it down to whatever. Yeah. And he's, <laughs> what, what is the point of his job? Because they never use the data he gathers. Do you know how much tax money and time is put into that? You know how many guns go into his little uh, cubicle and never come back out, unfortunately? Because whatever. And yeah. you know, if you're involved in anything, they test all of your guns in order to see if they get a case match for... It turns out nothing because they don't care even when it matches. Like, what is what are we doing this all for? They keep the the idea is the CSI effect BS that it's like, oh, we'll get the gun down to the person who it was registered to. Like that's and that's what people think, right? Whereas even like one eight, and I was on a I, I was doing a FedSoc talk recently. The, the entire and, thing exists not to help with common crime. You know what it exists for? Oh no, to, to f over the FFL. On rent, well, yes, but then also the random high publicity crime where it maybe might help. Maybe. Right. No, but it, th here's the thing. I, I was explaining this. I was explaining how it only goes to the first retail purchaser and basically any gun that wasn't made within the last three years, there's, it's worthless. Right. Um, and the guy stopped me. He's like, no, they were able to find the guy who did the New York, like there was some shooting that happened or whatever within three hours because of the trace data. It's like, yeah. You found the one guy who was so stupid that he dropped the gun that he had bought at an FFL. And also, by the way, the trace data came back 45 minutes after he turned himself in. And like that was that was their grand, like, no, we did you we got we go we got, we got it. We got that one guy after he turned right. himself in. Yeah, and the other thing is like people crime. are like, no, it can identify, it can tie a gun to a crime, it can. It can Oh, you know, you, you know how you use the trace data? Well, you got to use the serials number, right? And when do you 
Like, what do you need to have the serial's number? The gun. The gun, right? Which means you found it, didn't you? No, no, no. That's why they want that. They want that. They want to be able to micro stamp. So they have yeah. To <laughs> It's I know so it's, it's it's so absurd because it's like we I gotta like but whole... everybody even gun owners think that it makes sense. It doesn't do anything. No. Oh, and that's another like uh, uh, like speaking of this like muckraking you know crap. You know what would clean up all this is a uh, uh, actual policing. Probably go a lot oh. further than whatever the hell this. Is. Hold on, are you telling me that? You, are you going to suggest that we pay cops not well, to just this, wander I'm, I'm around be beating up like, brown kids? Some of this, some of this crap, some of this crap they do feels like they're trying to turn policing into running the the register at a McDonald's where it has like right. all the buttons that you know instead of having to do the math on yeah. okay, item seven's worth this much and punch in the numbers, they have a button for every item. Yeah, and if you ever try to combine like something. It. Yeah, if you ever try to do anything with the menu that's not on that thing, God help you, you know? Because <laughs> they have to find that button. And it's like they're trying to make policing that way, too, as yeah. best they can. Probably because of what they're able to get in policing right now. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. It's... And I know I know, guys that are cops that are frustrated, too, because they just they look at their own rookies, they look at their own like coworkers, and they go, what are you doing? Well, the, the, I do it this way. I always <laughs> do it that way. Is the way was... surgeon said. Right, they're, they're putting it in the plate. <laughs> Some of the people listening probably know that guy at work. Like, it's, yep. it's got to go in the box. Or, it... <laughs> okay, maybe if you can't think critically, don't put this person in this position. No, okay, can't do that. Yeah, no, he's got it. He's got to. Yeah, he's got to be there. Yeah, he, we hired him, and now he's here mm -hmm. forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is all absurd. Um, the. Uh, the whole tracing thing, man, it gets me so bad. So I was talking to somebody else earlier about, we were talking about the muckracking thing and people making a big deal out of firearm stories. I don't know if you remember last year, GOA, another GOA shit fest, mm -hmm. um, where they, they, oh, they blew it wide open. ATF has all of these out of business records. They're going to make a gun registry. Okay. They're already made, they, they put the stuff on the front of the FFL, like the 4473. Yeah. That was the crowning moment when you went, Boy, I wonder why you put all this data right at the front. That's interesting. Well, but here's the thing. They intentionally keep those records as paper because they know they're worthless. Like, again, what is the value of a pawn shop selling a used 1911, you know, which is already completely untraceable, by the way, 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. There's no value. They just they just warehouse it like this. Was, it was not a new thing. It was not new. I mean, yes, it's a thing that was happening. And this is the problem with a lot of gun journalism. You get at stuff. Like, there's a periphery that's real, and you're talking around it, right? They're all freaked out about ATF warehousing all of this stuff that they've been doing forever, right. but not talking about the actual thing, which is, wait, why are we doing the form at all? Right. To be fair, I don't, the pay, at this point, with the way that they're pushing everybody to go online, they're just mm -hmm. going to skim that. Yep. If they want it, they're going to skim it that way. Because yeah, and, and it. And this is but again, only if it's... there's there's been this stupid thing in in law with standing lately, mm -hmm. where you have to be harmed or you have to have some sort of standing to be able to do it. So as long as the ATF never tells us they have the registry, we can't sue them for having the registry. Well, standing is um, it, it was a mistake when it was written into the constitution. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, because every time it doesn't go well for them, they just drop the ball. But I guarantee you, mm -hmm. what you'll never find. But to be fair, they do this all the time with the warrants and stuff, too. They have yeah. data that they're not supposed to have. And if they told you they had it, you could sue. So what do they do? They come yeah, up with an anonymous informant who just happens right. to know that thing that they found out that they weren't supposed to have done. So it's going to be the same way. If you guys are really afraid of the secret registry, you're never going to see it. Yeah. It's never going to go public that there's a secret registry. No, that's why you should be using Matt's gun registry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Again, did guys, story? did we tell this on the show? We told it on the show last okay, time. But, yeah, but any anyone out there, send me fifteen dollars and your gun serial number, and I'll register it. Yeah, and I promise I will not give it to the government. I don't have to. Okay, so I'll take care of it for you. I'll miss you. <laughs> you would get subpoenaed on it. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I'd be like, no, this is my registry. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine how if you get like twenty thousand entries in the ATFs, like, uh, can we have access to that? No, 
<laughs> no, it's mine. <laughs> yeah, it's just a room full. It's a, a room full of the of the Moo Cow composition books. ATF <laughs> comes and like, we want to go through it, and I kick over the tower. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> No, you just kill it with dummy ones. Like, Good luck, fuckers! You're like, oh, I've memorized the patterns on the front of these moo cows. Yeah, and uh, the only certain they're all unique. Real. For every person that did a gun, I put it in with their same name, but with three fake ones in three fake moo cows. <laughs> and so all the moo cows are the same guys, but the serial numbers are randomized, and you don't know which ones are which. Uh, no, what it is is I've actually uh, I've got a cipher for the serial numbers. Uh, <laughs> I know the serial number by how I wrote the the, the Spider Man fan fiction, the <laughs> Spider Man X Elsa fan fiction. <laughs> if you think you're getting my cipher, <laughs> oh man, PatriotPatchCompany.com. Yeah, this has seemed look like at this. Yeah, look, look, I got this dog. dog. Uh huh. I got this patch. That's it dog doesn't compatible. work. Yeah, it's dog compatible. Look at that. Yeah, it totally yeah. works. <laughs> <laughs> But what are they, this is their new patch. I've got one here. They've got Lady Liberty and Lady Justice, and they it's blurry. have uh, it's blurry. It's yeah, but blurry. this new camera's blurry. great. Yeah. Whatever. All right, hold. We we'll just put it on the website, the web zone here. Okay. Uh, patch of the month club. Patch of the month September. Club. Oh, exclusive. there we go. That's Lady Liberty. Liberty. She's got nods and <laughs> an and M14 an with an M14 a with a peck yeah. on it for some reason. Well, to be fair, the peck 15 came out the very next year. Did it? Yeah, M4. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I was like, no, it didn't. <laughs> you got me. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't believe I just asked him at the end. Whatever. <laughs> oh. Oh. And then there's, uh, so yeah, there's Liberty and then there's Justice. And Justice has a trench gun. Where's Justice? I don't see it. How'd you get Justice? I don't know. It's on, only Liberty shows up on the things. Man, you guys get extra patches if you sign up. Yeah, you gotta sign up. Maybe Justice is next month, and you got maybe it somehow. Yeah, no, that would have been that would have been cool. You guys can get <laughs> Justice now if you sign up now. Maybe. Yeah, I think probably anyway. But either way, look, if you use the code Twig ten T W I G ten, you're gonna get a discount. Right. So do you even really care? Do you even really care? Rose, do you care? Do you care? Oh, that was sweet. Yeah, oh, cute dog. Yeah. All right. He's probably Thank you guys for coming. Yeah. Thanks for coming, everyone. Yeah. This is a down note. Can we end on more hysterical laughter? <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, everybody, have a good one. We love you. And for God's sake, it's a receipt. It's a receipt, not a yeah, permit. It's a receipt or a license. Don't say that. Yeah. Good. Night, Pennsylvania. <laughs> you stupid.